Okay, well, in these two boxes, there are two different makes of engine. One is a 60s English engine, and the other is a 50s American engine. But today, they're both going to come together as such. We're going to try and make one running engine out of two engines. So, uh, yeah, let's have a look and see what we've got in the okay, box. So, like I said, two engines separated by about 10 years of production and uh, one is English and one has come over from America so on the right here we have an early 1950s Briggs & Stratton Model 5S and over here we obviously have what's left of a 1960s 75cc Suffolk engine. We have a block over here. So yeah, two completely different manufacturers, but I've said it before and I'll say it again, they are pretty much identical engines. Suffolk obviously looked at the old Briggs and & Stratton and thought, yep, I'll have some of that. So they uh, made their engine pretty much identical to it. There's not a great deal of difference between the two. But yeah, that should be proved today by us having a running engine by the end of this day made out of two completely different makes. Right, well, I should get all the stuff that we're going to use Got the both engines out of the box and uh, we'll go from there. Okay well that's most of the bits and bobs that we're using for this project. Uh, as you can see we are using more of the Suffolk than we are of the Briggs. But there is a good reason behind that. I actually um, I didn't get much of the old 5S when I brought it. It had no flywheel. Um, I've rocked the coil off of it. It had no carburetor. It has a different intake manifold than the um, Suffolk. The Suffolk's is slightly larger. That's about the only difference really, apart from a few bits in the design. But uh, yeah, so we can't use a great deal of the old bricks. It would be nice to use the block, but like I say, I haven't got anything to fit a carburetor to it, which is a bit of a bummer. But anyway, we should be able to get something that runs out of all this. And we do have the 5S's nice cast iron sump here with its oil pump. If we can get that working, that'd be a nice addition. Uh, we've got the 5S's piston and uh, the 5S's cylinder head, cast iron cylinder head. And then we have the majority of the Suffolk over here with the block, the cowling, the tank, the crankshaft. Uh, I was going to use the Briggs's crankshaft, but it uses a bigger flywheel nut. And also um, the actual hole in the flywheel on the Suffolk is smaller as well. So again, if I had the Briggs's flywheel, I could, could get it going with the um, Briggs's ignition backplate. But firstly, we've encountered our first problem. The Suffolk's little locating pins for the sump are slightly bigger than they are on the Briggs. So we're gonna have to drill those out to a slightly larger size, but the sump actually fits on there perfectly. It's just those little pins that need uh, addressing. Maybe I can get them out of the Suffolk. Because they're not really needed all that much. But yeah, we have got to try and get this oil pump working. That'd be a nice thing to use. Because uh, I'm not sure if we're going to get clearance for an oil dipper. With that in there. So it really is crucial that we get that working. Yeah. Anyway. So we'll crack on. We'll do a few more things and uh, see if we can get that oil pump working first. That would be the first step. But I'm hoping to have a running engine by the end of today. Okay, well hopefully you'll be able to see, probably by the bloody mess, that we have got this tiny little oil pump working. So yeah, we should be good to go now. Gonna have to drill out those bits of the sump 
and uh, how we could start to make a start. Ooh, very good. Right, well, let's see what we can do. Okay, well, the oil pump's been cleaned out, the sump's been cleaned out. Uh, the holes have been drilled to suit the locating pins on the top of the block. Yeah, everything's going well so far. Uh, the pump meshes okay with the cam gear. It's going to be uh, a little bit noisy, I think, but it should be fine. So, yeah, just got to um, fit in the crankshaft and the piston now and we'll go from there. Just going to clean up the bore and the piston. Okay, just testing the fit of the big end on the Suffolk crankshaft. It's the Briggs and Stratton's connecting rod, which is badly scored, which is one reason why we're using it, because it is past it. And I think the Suffolk's one is pretty good, so I want to save that. So we're probably, we're probably going to have a noticeable big end knock. But anyway, that'll be fine. We're not going to run this in for very long. Just a bit of fun really just to see if it can be done because i know these engines are so similar that i reckon it should run just fine okay well that's the 5s's piston and connecting rod now fitted in the suffolk block and connected to the uh suffolk's crankshaft it's sitting on the uh 5S's sump with its original cam powered um, oil pump, gear pump, which turns nicely. Uh, the engine unfortunately is going to be quite rattly. There is a sizable amount of play in the big end, so I should imagine it's going to be pretty noisy, but still, like I said, it isn't going to be run that often and it probably isn't going to be run for that long. Anyway, let's carry on. We've got to uh, make up some gaskets now and find a couple of bolts for the old Suffolk. A couple of them have gone walkies. Okay, well, we're finally making a bit more progress after a few pickups. Got quite a lot of homemade sump gaskets here to get the clearance for it to mesh nicely with the oil pump. But the oil pump is working. We've got the Suffolk ignition sorted out now and that's producing a nice little spark so in theory once we get the head on and the rest of the engine assembled it should run in theory anyway we'll see but yeah it's definitely coming together now I'm gonna put the Briggs 5S head on in a minute see if we get any compression and then yeah we'll go from there Okay, well, more progress has been made. We've got the cylinder head bolted down, the Suffolk exhaust and manifold on the block, the uh, flywheel is also on, the starter cup is on, but we're not going to be able to use the recoil at the moment, I've got to sort of side out for that. So we're going to have to try and rope start it for the first time, it should be interesting. Uh, yeah, we're just about to uh, put the cowl in place now. And uh, then we'll carry on from there. Carburetor will be the last thing we sort out. And then we'll be ready to see if she'll start. Okay, well, the creation is finished and we're ready to see if it starts. We've cleaned the carburetor out, mounted it on some little skids a bit quick. So yeah, we're ready to see if it'll go for the first ever time. Got some fuel in this fuel tank. Just found out that a um, old Villiers banjo fitting from the carburetor of an old Villiers engine that I used to have fits this tank perfectly so we can finally use this tank for some things that don't have fuel tanks so every Suffolk we have doesn't have to have a fuel tank mounted on the front of it. Anyway, let's see if we actually get anything.